Welcome back to Teresa's Dad. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. And if you're new here, welcome. I have an awful garbage, filthy goddamn mouth where I say a lot of weird stuff as a comma. If you're not into that or weird shit in general, this, my dear, is not the place for you. Feel free to X out the video here. No harm, no foul. But I'll remember our time fondly. If you want to jump straight to the overall review of the products, I'll leave a time code down below. Feel free to jump ahead. Pumpkins, I have a couple of little housekeeping items before we jump into my disgusting gross story. Number one, I got a new tripod for Christmas and I'm testing out two different lights. So if things look a little funny in this video, just know that it's a testing period. But if you do like what it looks like, let me know down below because then I'll keep this set up. Right now it looks good in the monitor, but of course I really don't know what the true monster is until I start editing this. So hopefully it's A-OK -okay USA. Number two, this is not my normal chair because my normal chair is in the other room. This does not have the same feel as my beautiful booty guru chair, but we're just gonna have to soldier on. But if you do remember this chair, let me know down below. Number three, my intro. So as some of you guys may know, or if you're new here, hi, my name is Teresa and I'm a garbage person. I have been getting demonetized left and right lately and it's been really fun, especially when you work so hard on a video to only get a dollar thirty back. And because of it, I had to start a Patreon, which by the way, to all my Patreon members, I love your goddamn faces. Because of that, I've also been trying to kind of play around with my intro to kind of figure out what is going on. I think I kind of figured out that what is flagging me perhaps is saying fuck as a comma. So if you are new here for a period of time, I was saying fuck as a comma in my intro. Fortunately, I'm gonna have to take that out. And I know, I know some people are really upset by that, which I find really funny actually, because I don't, I don't find it a big deal. Like, it's not like I made that phrase up. It's not original, like it's been said a million times, but I guess people resonated with that. Fortunately, I'm gonna have to take that out because I think that's, the thing that's dinging me. Plus perhaps some things at the end of the video. I'm still kind of trying to test the waters out, but I think majority of my issues is probably within the first minute of my video. And with that said, I wanna say that this is all your fault. Basically because you guys like and share my videos and boost me in the algorithm, the robots are starting to see me and they're starting to realize that I'm really not a good person to be on the internet. <laughs> that there are some issues, all right? So unfortunately, I blame all you guys for that. Don't be mad at me blame yourselves for liking these videos, okay? No, I kid. But in all seriousness, though, I'm gonna have to take that out. So if you are like upset or you're triggered by that, oh, I know I said triggered, who, um, I apologize, I'm really sorry, but just know in about two minutes, I'm gonna probably say cunt seven times. So you didn't lose me. This is the only way I feel like that I will be able to maintain me. Cause I'd rather do it this way than to have to bleep everything that I say or say things like, shoot, Fooey, jeepers. I, I would literally kill myself if I had to do that. So trust me, we're not doing that. Anyway, so yeah, we're gonna have to cut that part of the intro. So I apologize if that makes you upset. It's just, it is what it is. Stop telling people about me. <laughs> Before I jump into my story, I want to throw a big old warning here. What I'm about to talk about is really, really nasty. <laughs> it's really, really fucking disgusting. So if you are someone that gets easily queasy by just hearing some really gross shit, don't watch this. Don't watch this while you're drinking. Don't watch this while you're eating. This is disgusting. Cool. I warned you sufficiently. So please don't be an asshole in the comments being like, you didn't warn me. Like, no, I warned you, bitch. Okay. It's not my fault. You didn't heed my warning. So the other day I was headed to the train and due to the holidays, it's been fairly light, which is fucking amazing amazing. So I get on the train and I actually find a seat. I know. And there I am playing Candy Crush, listening to 90s dance music and living my best goddamn life. Now my actual commute on the train isn't very long at all, but the longer that I'm on the train, the train starts to fill up. Now it's standing room only, but I don't give a flying fuck because I have a seat and that's all that matters. I'm selfish. So we pull into the next stop and a guy with a backpack gets on the train. He's across from me, but a little further away from me. So here I'm sitting here and he's like pretty much like diagonal to me. Now directly behind the guy with the backpack, there's a man that's standing near the pole. When he notices that the guy's backpack is touching him, he says, Buddy, get your fucking backpack off of me. Do you like my stereotypical New York accent? I fucking love it. When he says that, I take out my AirPod. I'm like, oh shit, this is gonna be real good, bitch. Mm-hmm. So the guy with the backpack doesn't do anything. He doesn't even flinch. So now the guy who yelled at him is starting to get really angry and talking really loud about how this guy with the backpack's an asshole because he won't move his bag, his bag is touching him. He needs to show him respect, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now don't get me wrong. I don't like when things touch me either. Who does? But this is New York City. This is a fucking cattle car, my friend. You're gonna be touched whether you like it or not. 
And while I understand his frustration, the dude was coming in a little too hot, a little too aggressive for my liking. But still, I'm a nosy bitch, so I want to listen to every fucking word he's saying. So again, the guy is just fucking yelling this and that, just being like really obnoxious and loud. And he turns around and says, Hey boss, move your fucking bag before I move your bag for you. Again, guy with the backpack doesn't flinch. This angers the man. So he takes both hands and shoves the guy with the backpack. The guy with the backpack now falls onto the people that were sitting below him. Now you hear people screaming like, Stop! I want to go home! Fight on your own time! Which was my personal favorite, might I add. So the backpack guy slowly gets up and he turns around to face this big angry guy. The backpack guy opens his mouth and projectile vomits all over the angry guy. It was like a fucking sprinkler head. <laughs> he literally threw up on the guy and threw up on the guy next to him, which I felt really bad for because I don't think the guy next to him was with the angry guy. That was just a casualty. That was really unfortunate. <laughs> so now people are like, <laughs> just screaming and losing their shit. The angry guy looks at himself, he's like, uh, uh. he then starts to throw up on himself and then on the fucking backpack guy. So he's like, <laughs> now they're throwing up on each other. Everyone at this point is fucking screaming. The lady next to me is like, Hoo. and I'm like, don't you fucking dare, bitch. Don't you dare. I have Uggs on, stop it. Now everyone's screaming. Everyone sounds like there's some more people on the other side of the car starting to throw up. Like it's a fucking chain reaction. Now the train has a few minutes in between stops. And let me tell you my little spicy lamb. It felt like a fucking eternity to get to the next stop. Even more passengers who I'm again assuming that they cannot be around the sight, smell, or sound of throw up were throwing up everywhere. And within those two to three minutes, you know, that was the time I was most frightened, waiting for my turn to be thrown up on. I'll never get on a train again. Who am I kidding? I'm poor, I have no fucking choice. By the time we pulled into the actual station, everybody just flung themselves out of the car. It was like a zombie movie. People were spilling onto the fucking floor, literally grabbing the people that were on the platform. They were like, don't go in there. It was fucking dramatic to say the least. And because of that little fun throw up party, the train ultimately went out of service because they had to hose that motherfucker down. And of course, now people on the platform looking back into the train car started to throw up on the train platform. That's when I was like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. It was basically like the train to Busan, if you ever saw that horror movie. I was literally just dodging people, trying not to get fucking hit, would throw up as I ran my fat ass up the goddamn subway station stairs. And by that point, I had so much PTSD, I couldn't stand the idea of waiting for another fucking train with these people. So I said, ah, fuck it, called an Uber from the station and it was the best $22 I have ever spent in my entire life. <sighs> that does not include tip. Anyway, that was my commute home. Yep. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a bite-sized review of new-ish products. We're gonna be talking about some items from ColourPop and we're gonna end with a couple of new eyeshadow palettes. So the first product we're gonna talk about is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer, this little bubby right here. Keep in mind, I'm 34 years closer to death and I have normal to dry skin. I got this in the shade Fair 4N. So this product retails for about $12 and it comes in about 24 shades. The shade range is pretty decent and the overall coverage is very light. After all, it is a fucking tinted moisturizer. This product is meant to even out skin tones and leaving you feeling refreshed and hydrated like a virgin sacrifice in a horror movie. Delicious. Now the packaging on this guy is pretty cute. I love the little squeezy tube. I love the little palm. It overall has a very pretty clean aesthetic. Now I've actually been playing around with this for a little over a week now. And the reason why I picked it up is because I watched Kate the Great's video on her favorite beauty products of 2019 and she couldn't shut the fuck up about this. So I'll link that video down below. Hi Kate, go check it out. She's wonderful, she's fabulous. And she's the reason why I picked up this product. So if I hate it, I blame her. And what really sold me was how her skin looked in her video. It was so fucking flawless. And I was like, how the fuck did you do that, bitch? So I was like, all right, I need to try this shit out. I like this product a lot, and I just wish it came out in the summertime. Granted, I think it came out about three months or so, but this could have been a lifesaver in the fucking summertime. This product is so perfect for those no makeup makeup kind of days. 
I found that the supplies really well with the sponge because using my hands or a brush kind of felt a little bit streaky and patchy. And it pairs really nice with Tatcha Silk Canvas as well as the Fenty Hydrating Primer, which are my two all time favorites. For something that has incredibly light coverage, you can build this product up without it looking overall cakey, which is fabulous. So while this is very light coverage, I can conceal some redness, not all, but I can conceal some. Again, this is really meant for light days, not catfishing. The thing I noticed the most about this product is that it works really well without using a lot of powder. However, I'm someone that needs powder. Otherwise, it will slip and slide all over my fucking face. With that said, if you do use a lot of powder, some areas, especially over on the hairline area, as well as my nose, can kind of come off a little bit crunchy looking and dried out and kind of point out like some weird buildup. However, that is only when I apply too much powder. If I apply a light amount of powder, it looks incredibly flawless. During the course of the day, it definitely does settle into fine lines, but being that it is light coverage, it's not super noticeable. I feel like this is gonna do so well in the summertime, especially for those days where it's so fucking humid. Kate also mentioned in her video that she actually pairs this with some of her favorite foundations to give like a really nice glow. So I'm gonna have to definitely try that out. That's the one thing I didn't do with this product. However, I love when applying it to the skin because your skin has this beautiful radiance. It's not overly dewy where it just looks like you have the meat sweats and it's not quite a natural finish. It's a little bit more than a natural finish. Your skin just looks so nicely hydrated. But I will say that it's not something that will last more than 12 hours. At the end of the day, there is some product visible on my face. It's not super noticeable that it's missing. I notice that it's missing, but it's not like some other foundations I have tried, say like the Beauty Bakery one, where it just like completely broke apart and it looks really fucking weird. This one kind of fades naturally. I think it's due to the fact that it's incredibly light coverage. So I'm actually a pretty big fan of this. And let me zoom you in because I'm wearing it today. So this is what it looks like on my face. You see my freckles poking through. You see my fine lines on my forehead. So again, you could see like my redness peeking through. I think the product sits very well on my nose. Overall, I really enjoy this product and I think this is going to be really, really fucking good in the summertime. So uh, thank you, Kate, for recommending this. This is awesome. The other product I wanna talk from ColourPop is the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Creamy Concealer. So I actually got it in the shade Fair 20N as well as Fair 10N, but ultimately 20N is a better match than the 10N. 10N will be very good if I wanna brighten some areas. Now this product retails for $9 and it comes in about 30 shades. This concealer is considered full coverage with a natural finish. The packaging on this is very nice and it's a welcome change from their original concealer. As for their original concealer, I remember liking it a lot, but then it stopped working for my skin. The older I get, the more my skin changes, and I can't really fuck with matte stuff anymore. With that said, I was very intrigued with this product. Upon application, I found this to be very full coverage, and true to the claims that it leaves my under eye area feeling very, very refreshed. The formula on this is a little bit on the thicker side. It does settle into fine lines, but honestly, that's the case when it comes to concealers for myself. Overall, it provides nice coverage, and you actually don't need a lot of product considering how full coverage it is. It kind of reminds me of the Jeffree Star concealer in that way. Only coverage wise, not formula wise. Two different monsters. Also, you're gonna hear that. They're doing construction outside. I can't stop that. So sorry. <laughs> And what's really nice about this is that you don't really need to work fast when blending this out, unlike some other hydrating concealers I have tried in the past where it immediately turned me into a fucking stone goblin, you don't need to rush and blend stuff out. This product does not dry like concrete on your face. Please do know I do set my under eye area to minimize the creasing. And if I don't set it, it does slide around a little bit. And I also notice that my fine lines look a little bit more prominent. So I definitely do need a powder to minimize that issue. As for longevity, I find it to be really nice and actually has a very nice lasting power. However, my favorite thing about this concealer is spot concealing because it provides really awesome coverage. Is this my favorite? No. To me, my favorite kind of radiant-ish concealer is the Collab Concealer from Sally Beauty. Unfortunately, that one's being discontinued. <laughs> so I've been making it my mission to go to every fucking Sally Beauty store to buy a shitload of those concealers but before they really go away. However, when that day comes where my stash is low, I will happily repurchase this. This is pretty fucking good. The next product I want to talk about is from Natasha Denona and it is the Mini Glam Palette. So this little scamp retails for about $25 and you get five shades in this little mini palette, two being matte and three being shimmer. Now I have a love-hate relationship with Natasha Denona. I want to be obsessed with this brand like everybody else is, but I find that this brand is terribly inconsistent and often not worth the hype. Yet here I am, an asshole. 
Anyway, my favorite Natasha Denona palette is actually the mini nude palette. She's a basic ass pumpkin spice loving Ugg boot wearing bitch. She's consistent and dependable like your fat jeans. And I love it for that very reason. So when this was announced, I lost my goddamn motherfucking mind. And with that said, it's okay. It's not what I thought it was gonna be. The color story appeared so cool toned online, but in person, this palette leans more warm tone and kind of looks like a reject version of the mini nude palette. Think about the original Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette versus the Vault collection. Yep. So my issue with this palette is that the colors are very warm and actually look really similar on the eye. This lacks depth in my opinion. And the amount of looks that you can create with this palette is actually very minimal. I feel like everything looks exactly the same. Unlike the mini nude palette where I feel like I have a little bit more variety. It's a shame because she's pretty, but she's not as good as say the mini nude or the mini gold palette. I found that these shades have a lot of kick up, a lot of fallout, and you need a makeup wipe to remove any excess product off your face. It's very, very messy. And I don't remember it ever being this messy before. Overall, the pigmentation is pretty great with the exception of the shade Seed, which is this brown shade right here. For a brown shade, it's actually kind of light and requires to be built up. Granted, you can build it up, but from what it looks like in pan, not as pigmented as I thought it was going to be. It's a little bit weak, a little bit dry. It's not the end of the world, but it's just something to note. I found that the shimmer shades actually work the best with a finger. They worked pretty good with a brush when you use some setting spray. If you don't use setting spray, it definitely lacks pigmentation, but I found that using a finger was actually the best application. So to kind of sum it up, this is not a bad palette. It's just not what I thought it was going to be, and therefore I don't think it was really worth $25 considering how good the mini nude and mini gold are. So if you are interested in picking up something from Natasha Denona, I would recommend those two palettes. This you could kind of skip on like it's, eh. It's not that great. Last but not least, let's talk about the Fenty Beauty Snap Shadow Mix and Match fucking things. I don't know, whatever this. Now these little bubbies retail for about $25 a piece. However, you can purchase two for 45. You can save a whole $5. Ooh. <sighs> Now there are eight different palettes you can choose from. So I chose the shades six and seven. And this is pretty much how you attach them. Just like that. I would say that the color story on all these little guys, with the exception of number eight, is pretty much neutral. So this is for your neutral ass loving hoe. Now what drew me into this was actually the packaging because I found it to be quite adorable. I love the little snap component and I feel like it connects very well with the overall aesthetic of the brand, comparing it to like the matchsticks that are magnetic. Like I think that's really cool. Like this definitely falls in line. And for me as a child, it reminds me of Polly Pocket and I love it. With that said, I was very hesitant about trying this out because I had the Moroccan Spice palette and I did not like it at all. It was not good, bitch. Not good. That palette was so lackluster that I had to return it. I was just like, I can't fucking own this shit. Like, I cannot own this shit, bitch. Like, no, no, get out of my life. What I really like about this is that you can choose your own color story. So for myself, I chose six and seven because those are the ones that appeal to me the most. And actually what I have on my eyes today is the number seven palette. It's a very good yellow. I really enjoyed the number seven palette. There is some kick up, there is some fallout. I found that the shadows were incredibly pigmented, easy to use, easy to build up, easy to blend out. And I found myself this week reaching for this palette more and more because of the simplicity of it. All the looks that I was able to create with this palette were like under five minutes and they were all very, very pretty. Granted, very neutral, but very pretty though. I also liked utilizing this palette as just transition shades and then putting a multi-chrome on top of it. I've been kind of using the shit out of this palette. I really do enjoy this one. The only thing I will know is that the shimmer shades in this is more on the messy side. So I found like the best application was with a finger. If you do have a brush, the sparkles kind of tend to get everywhere. So it's just better to finger yourself every once in a while. So I'm incredibly happy that I did purchase this palette. Granted, she's not the prettiest bitch at the party. My makeup dick is not really that hard when I'm around her, but I do get a half a chub and that's really all that matters. As for number six, I wanted to like this more. I think in hindsight, I probably should have picked another palette because online it looked really pretty, but then when in person I was like, oh shit, this actually looks really similar. Like the two brown colors look so fucking similar. And I feel like the quality on this is very different from the number seven, which I find really strange. This one has a crazy amount of fucking kick up and fallout and you really need to build up these shades to have a nice opacity. It can be done, but you really have to dig into the pan. It's, it's weird, I don't know. It's like fucking weird. And both the 
mattes and the shimmers are actually chunky. So I found that like when I was applying it to my eyelids, beef cheese little crumbles was like falling all over the fucking place. It was really fucking annoying. And it was also incredibly messy to clean up because all the excess did not wipe away. I really needed to utilize a couple of makeup wipes. It was really fucking annoying, especially for the shimmer shades because the glitter was getting everywhere. Oh my God, I fucking, I can't, I don't like this one. Honestly, I think I'm probably gonna take this palette back and just get another one because I don't understand how the quality dips so much from six to seven. So yeah, mm, I do not recommend this one at all. Number seven, absolutely. Number six, not so much. But with that said, I actually don't mind these things. Are they something that you really need to go and rush out and get? No, not necessarily because while I had a mixed experience with it, it's, I don't think this is something that you really need to rush out and get. It's not revolutionary. Packaging maybe, but formula wise, it's, it's, it's okay. Eh, so even if you don't get number seven, it's not like you're missing out, to be honest. To me, get it when it's on sale or you have a gift card and you're just like, fuck it, I just want to buy something and I don't know what else to buy. That's when you should get it. <laughs> As for the price, I really wish each palette was about $20. So if you buy two, it would be $35 because I feel more comfortable spending that. $45, I feel like it's a little bit of a stretch considering the quality differs on each palette. So, eh. It's all right. But that said, that is my bite size review. Let me know down below if you have any of the products that I mentioned today and how you feel about them, if you love them, if you hate them, if we're on the same page, if we're not, let me know because I love hearing from you. And with that said, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button, it's free, and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Discord, Patreon. On Thursdays, we have a podcast called The Miserable Three. And sometimes I'm on my husband's Twitch channel where I just yell about bullshit on the internet. If you want to know what is on my face along with all the links I just mentioned everything will be listed in the description box below and I'll see you little pumpkins later bye